Hi everybody, I'm Miss Laura. Welcome back to another Fresh Look Friday video. Today's video, I'm gonna be telling you about books for upper elementary, so like fourth through sixth grade books. I have a variety of things to show you today, some um, novels as well as a graphic novel and some nonfiction. These are all brand new books. They are available for checkout here at the library. You can place them on hold and even pick them up via curbside if you're not comfortable coming into the library. We have tons of stuff available for you, lots of programs, all available through our website, www.lvdl.org. You ready? Okay, we're gonna start with this one. I'm very excited about this book. So this is called The Barren Grounds. It's by David A. Robertson. Um, this is the first book in a series, a trilogy. I'm not sure. Um, it's the Misawa Saga. It reminded me a lot of Narnia. So if you're a fan of high fantasy stories, big adventure stories, definitely pick up The Barren Grounds. So from the cover, you can kind of see here we have two kids and then what looks like a bear and a squirrel. And it looks like they're in winter time. I would say this accurately reflects, reflects the story. Um, I listened to this book on Libby. You can download Libby through the library. It's a free app and you can check this book out to read it or listen to it. Morgan is our main character. There she is, that's Morgan. Um, and she has a foster brother named Eli. Actually, they're foster kids. Morgan has been in the system her whole life, and she just met Eli like a month ago. They are in the same house with the same family. Morgan has moved around tons. She's never stayed. The longest she stayed at a house was two years, so she's moved around a lot. She has a lot of anger issues. She gets really, really angry because people just don't understand her, and she has trouble like vocalizing that besides just yelling. So Morgan and Eli live in Canada. The story takes place in Canada, and they're indigenous, um, native. They're called a lot in the story, and that sets them apart from everybody else. They are definitely a minority, so this is something that they kind of bond over. Eli was raised in that culture, whereas Morgan was not, so she does not identify with it very well. They are hiding out in the attic of the house that they're staying in, and Eli loves to draw, and they post one of his pictures up on the wall, and it turns into this like magical portal that they can walk through. The picture comes alive, and they see this bear here, Ochek, and they end up going in and exploring Misawa, and they discovered that Misawa has been in winter for years and years and years, and they decide to go on an adventure with Ochek, to try and end this winter because everyone's starving. So a great adventure story and I cannot wait for the next book, The Barren Grounds. Then to lighten the mood a little bit, I have Lupe Wong Won't Dance. So this is written by Donna Barba Higuera. Um, Lupe loves sports, specifically baseball. And she really wants to meet her hero, Fu Li. But the only way she can do that, her uncle promised to introduce her, is if she gets straight A's in all her classes, which is probably fine for her seventh grade. But then she discovers in her PE class, they're doing a unit on square dancing. And if she doesn't dance, she won't pass. And she is refusing to dance because who wants to square dance, right? So this is definitely a lighthearted story. Very, very funny. It's very real too. A lot of feelings that she expresses. I think a lot of seventh graders feel. Um, it's funny. There's a lot of information about friendships and what that's like in middle school. And to find out if she does dance or if she gets to meet Fu Li, you'll have to read Lupe Wong Won't Dance. All right. So changing gears, I have a graphic novel I want to share with you. I loved this. Oh my goodness. I did not think I would like this book as much as I did. I picked it up just because it was new on the new shelf. I kind of liked the cover and I like graphic novels. So I thought, why not? I was hooked, man. So this is called Lightfall, The Girl and the Galdurian. So again, this is another fantasy story, takes place in another realm. What's interesting about this book is that there's no light. Well, let me rephrase, there's no sun. The sun got extinguished generations ago. No one really knows what happened. And now there's these big giant balls of light all over in the sky, like humongous. And that's what keeps um, the area lit. 
The problem is they never go off, so there's no night. So no one has really experienced dark, really. So our main character is B. That's the girl right there on the cover. So B has a grandfather who you might not expect, a pig, a pig wizard, a pig wizard grandfather. She's adopted. <laughs> and he's very forgetful. Um, and one day she comes home and he's gone. Grandpa's gone. And there's a note that he's gone on this adventure not to follow because it'll be dangerous. Well, obviously, B wants to save her grandfather, so she goes with the help of this Galdurian. The thing is, Galdurians are supposed to be extinct. They are not supposed to be around anymore. Except for she met one named Cad, and he's now going to help her find her grandfather. So this is an epic quest with adventure and danger and magic. It's very cool. And I really, really like the art, too. There's a lot of cool pages in here. It's just beautiful. And it just keeps you turning the page. So Lightfall, the girl in the Galdurian. I cannot wait for the second one of this, too. And this is written and illustrated by Tim Probert. And finally, my last book. My goodness, I loved all of my books this week. But this one may, might be my favorite, which is odd, because I don't usually read nonfiction. It's not usually my favorite. But this, I read in a day. I could not put it down. It is called All 13. The Incredible Cave Rescue of the Thai Boys Soccer Team. So I don't know if you remember this, but back in 2018, there was this soccer team of Thai boys ranging from the ages of 8 to 13, and then their junior coach, who was 25, who decided to go one afternoon in this cave. There's lots of caves in Thailand, and a lot of them have been there before. So they went in the afternoon, and they were just exploring, but it was in the middle of the monsoon season, and there was tons of rain, and the cave started flooding, and then they got trapped inside. It took a couple days to even figure out if the boys were alive, but they did. I remember seeing all of this on the news. It was intense. And the good news is all 13 were rescued, and that's what this book is about. There's a lot of really cool photographs in here. There's a lot of adventure. There's a lot of information about Thai culture that I didn't know about, and I learned a lot by reading this. It reads like a story. It definitely reads like a story. Chapter after chapter, you're turning the page. There's cliffhangers. Even though you know how it ends, you want to know the details. Because this rescue team was a world rescue. There were people from all over the world helping. There were cave divers. I learned so much about cave diving. I didn't even know that was a thing, but it is. So all 13. This is also available on Hoopla. So if you want to read it digitally, you can. Check this out. All right. That's all I have for you today. Hopefully we will see you next week. See ya.